Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. This is an opportunity that once again the Lord has given us. And what we are going to have is what we believe. You know, God has made it so clear and so simple for us. So that whatever we see or whatever we believe or what we choose to be persuaded with, it will be our experience. It's that clear. And that is why we should have the right uh, belief. Because with the right belief, we'll be able to live rightly. If we do not have the right belief, it will not help us at all. We are blessed, but you can choose not to see it or not to believe it. And it will be so. You know, most times, it's about what we have opened our hearts to believe. And that's why the teachings are so important. Most of the issues we have are based on what we believe secretly. What you hold dear in your heart, what you hold in your heart as the truth. If you are wrong, then that will hurt you. And it's destroying you slowly by slowly. But if you believe into something greater or better, of course, your life will be blessed. So that's how it works again. We are so free that we can bind ourselves. We are so free that we can reject this freedom. You know, but I pray that you may open up your heart for the truth and choose to see what God is seeing. Choose to receive what as he has given you. Choose to believe what he believes about you. Choose to know what he knows about you. That's how you align yourself with the truth. And that's how you align yourself with that which has freely been given to you by grace. Glory to God forevermore. I pray that that will be your portion today and forever in Jesus' mighty name. We are once again here and we want to talk about as we come to the conclusion of this series, the things we've been talking about, about the, 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 about the Holy Spirit. We have a text here in Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to read verse 18. It also talks about the Holy Spirit. Let's hear what he has to say because it will bless us. It says, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. You know, and do not be drunk with wine. Do not be drunk with wine. And this is one of the things that we need to get right because of the issue that is always a debate about drinking or not drinking, or drinking little or getting drunk, you know. Um, what is the idea? Is he bringing forth here? Is he talking about uh, drinking necessarily? No. He's giving an illu uh, illustration, you know, by using the state of drunkenness. So we will use a word, this word he uses here, and do not be drunk with wine. Be not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. Do not be drunk with what? With wine. What do we have here? We have our text that reveals us that when someone is drunk with wine, there is a state in which that person gets in. You know, when someone is drunk, when someone is drunk, there is a way he's not in control, full control of himself. When someone is drunk, there's a way he's not he cannot take charge 
of things by himself. If you want, you might say that this person kind of disappears and the wine takes over. The state of drunkenness is what is bringing our attention to so that we may learn something from there. And he was saying, well, these people who go and drink and fill their hearts with wine, with, fill themselves with wine, and they think they are okay or they are doing good. But he says there is something better than that. Whatever you are looking for in wine, there is something better than that. And he's talking about the drunkenness state of being. And he says, look, you don't need that if you realize or discover the importance of the Holy Spirit. You know, if you discover the importance of the Holy Spirit, you realize that it is not necessary because there's something better that God has created for us, has given us, which will make your heart merry, or you that will make you glad, and there are no consequences. You know, when somebody is drunk, there are uh, there are implications. You know, like I said, he's not full, he's not in full control of his of his actions, of his mind, of his life. Something else has taken over. And when wine takes over or when somebody is drunk, do you think it's some good, something good? No. All over the world, they know that is not the right thing. It's, it's not right. All over the world. They will tell you you should not drink and drive. It's a crime in many countries, in many nations. You know, because they know what you will do. It will harm other people because you are not in control. You are not sober. So they will not advise you to drink and then uh, to get drunk and then uh, drive because they know you won't be driving the car, the car will be driving you. And imagine if the car is driving you and not driving it, where do you think it will go? It will end where you don't want it to go. And again, there will be implications. So he's saying this, so that we may understand what he is alluding to. What is he actually talking about, honestly? What is he saying? What is he saying? He's saying that's important for us to realize. To realize the importance of of the Holy Spirit because the idea here is the Holy Spirit is not drinking it's not dr talking about drinking or not drinking is talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit instead of be getting drunk you get filled with the Holy Spirit glory to God so how do you get when you are filled with the Holy Spirit they say you are kind of drunk of the Holy Spirit in other words, you are not the one who is taking charge. The Holy Spirit has taken charge. But now, since the Holy Spirit is God, there are no consequences. If any, there are going to be healing, life. You know, it will result in power and life instead of resulting into problems and chaos. You know, when God is in control, when God is guiding you, when God is leading you, it's different from when he's not the one guiding you and leading you. He says, if God takes over through the power of the Holy Spirit, your life will be a supernatural life, will be a unique kind of life, will be a different kind of life. And this will be so sweet because the things which you will do, you will not do them by your own abilities, by yourself. The Holy Spirit will do these things through you. As it's like when a person is drunk, you know, Whatever he does, he does not do it by, by himself. They are not sober. Something else has taken over and is doing whatever it is doing through them. 
looking at them, you think they know what they are doing, but the truth is they don't know what they are doing. But there is this um, there is this thing that has already taken over. And since that is known, that somebody is not sober, but this uh, state of not being sober is also consequential. There are some implications. So they will even stop you from driving or doing harm to yourself because you will actually kill yourself, which is a bad thing. But he says, on the contrary, if you discover the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God can take over your life, the Spirit of God can uh, take over, can rule, can reign, can, can influence you. You see, when you're a drunkard, you do everything under the influence of what? Of, 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 uh, of, of wine. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, or in other words, you are in that state of drunk or being drunk by the Holy Spirit, you are doing things by the influence of the Spirit of God. Do you see what I'm talking about? This is why he says, and do not be drunk with wine. And do not, if you want to be drunk, he says the Holy Spirit is the best thing. The Holy Spirit is better. If you want to be under certain influence so that you may not, you know, many times people do it because probably they think it's going to help them from running away, you know, from some troubles or things they are facing in their lives. They hide themselves in, uh, in, 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 a, in that state of drunkenness. But when they, they are, they come back, they are sober again, they realize all oh, those issues have not changed. You just hid yourself into something. It's an illusion. It's not changing any situation. It's not taking away any problem. You're just destroying yourself. Or just killing yourself. It's not building. It's not helping you at all. It's only causing trouble. And you are downloading a lot of sicknesses in your life. If you want to solve the problem of sorrow, you cannot be drunk and think that sorrow will run away. If there are issues you have to face, you face you don't run away by getting drunk and suppose or assume that all those issues are going to be solved by you being drunk. No. But he says there's a better way. Imagine if you knew how to get drunk by the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is God, like I said, and he cares. Do you know that when you are filled with the Spirit of God, He takes church and He will deal with all those things and you will see answers and solutions beyond your expectation, beyond what you could, you could do for yourself. This is what He's saying. That we should be eager to be filled, to get drunk by the Spirit of God. The same way a drunken person is. He's the is under influence and you know what they do it deliberately you cannot just get drunk unless you you choose to you know if you drink and continue to drink you get drunk isn't it that's how it works you drink and continue to drink and then you get drunk right all right so he says in other words you can choose if you want to be filled with the holy spirit you can choose to. And he says the moment you are under the influence of that spirit, oh my goodness, your life will never be the same. Your life will fly. And you will be enjoying meanwhile as the spirit of God is doing the work. <laughs> Glory to God. Shalom, shalom. I want to remind you to subscribe on Church of Life Rwanda and also share this good news with your world. I keep on saying that our world needs the gospel and you are blessed as you do it.